All right. Well, I'm Charles Wright, Chief Scientist with Azimuth Systems, and I'm here to talk about drone channel models. So, um, I'm going to drone on about some channel models for a bit. So, I guess the first thing you should know about uh, channel models for the drone application is that right now there is no standard. So, you could go looking around and uh, look pretty hard and, and not be able to find anything. However, it's similar enough environment to things we're familiar with that with the right sort of tweaks to the model, we can get something which, while not standard, is at least reasonable. And that's my standard right now for uh, usefulness is, is it a reasonable thing? And we'll let the channel model sounders and and developers uh, work on this after, um, you know, and when they get when they get a hold of it, they can figure out what the proper channel model is. In the meantime, uh, I'm just looking for something reasonable. So uh, I've drawn a little sketch here showing a very primitive uh, environment for the drone environment. The drone environment. We have our hexacopter here and it's got two antennas on it, and I've got uh, some guy on the ground with a box with two antennas on it, and there's some buildings around, and I didn't want to spend all day drawing windows, uh, as you can tell. But the, that's sort of the, the basic idea, is that obviously we've got somebody on the ground, we've got, somebody in the, we've got uh, an aircraft in the sky, and there's an environment. Now, the thing you'll notice is that in the sky, there's nothing around the drone, and on the ground, there's buildings, potentially trees, other landscape features, um, depending on where the drone is being operated. So that's kind of the, the first thing to notice, is that if you wanted to um, take a current um, channel model, uh, such as provided by the azimuth uh, geometric uh, modeling tool, then you would at least find environments that are similar to the guy on the ground, but what's missing is uh, environment for around the drone itself. Um, another thing to notice is uh, obviously drones travel fast and I don't know what uh, drone speed is, but they're upwards of you know highway speeds of cars, and depending on how you know fancy your drone is, it might even be uh, a couple of hundred miles an hour. We're not going to focus on really high-speed aircraft, you know, 500 miles an hour, 1,000 miles an hour, that kind of thing. Um, we're just thinking about um, the kind of typical things where somebody carries a, a drone out and sets it out and they're trying to surveil an area for some reason or another. So anyway, um, the interesting thing is, as I was saying, that they're scattering around the ground terminal, but there's no scattering to speak of around the, the drone itself. So the standard double directional channel model is kind of, uh, Let's just say it's a, it's a little bit, um, let's just say it's not quite appropriate. But what you could do is you could take that double directional model and say that on the air terminal side, that there is a, um, that instead of having a spread of rays, uh, you just reduce it down to close to zero, right? So the angular spread, first of all, for each cluster is very small, say on the order of two to five degrees, and that the angles of departure or angles of arrival at that, at that um, aircraft are all pretty much focused around, we'll call it zero degrees, and give or take uh, uh, fractions of degrees pointing to the ground terminal. So effectively, you've, you've got almost a line of sight channel. Now, I'm sure that you could find some cases where the drone is not being operated uh, in a line of sight fashion. In that case, well, things change a bit, um, but 
that I guess depends on uh, the situation you're in and how how you uh, want to do your modeling uh, under the circumstances that we don't really have any standard yet. So, um, so that's generally the idea. You would you would pick a, a environment such as um, say the IMTA uh, urban macro, or even the urban micro, or suburban macro or maybe even rural, because those would give you the right power to lay profile and the angular spread and statistics around the ground terminal. Now, in that case, we have to turn it around and we would say that the statistics around the UE are equivalent to the ground terminal rather than the base station, because the base station is usually high. So in, in, in a sense, the, the, the base station is, is the aircraft and the, um, the ground terminal is the UE in terms of equivalent environments. And then, um, with, as I said, the aircraft being you know, relatively high, much higher than a, than a base station, um, the, the scenario is generally a line of sight scenario. Now, the other thing you should ask is, well, how many antennas do we have? So, I don't know what uh, they're using right now for antennas on drones, but it's easy to see that if you want to have high definition video coming down, that you're gonna need a, a high capacity channel. And what that means is they're gonna go to MIMO video downlinks. So however many antennas they can put on either end here is probably uh, what they're going to want to do. So you ask yourself, on a ground terminal, how big is that and how far apart can my antennas be? Um, and then on a drone, the same question, right? And how many antennas could you put up there? Now my guess is that it'll probably be no more than two antennas for a while, simply because um, if it's a strong line of sight scenario, then having more antennas isn't going to get you uh, the channel uh, diversity that you want uh, unless you start, well, you, what you can do, the best thing you can do is have antennas which are orthogonally polarized, but then since the and that would be great if you had a fixed position and you were aiming your, your cross pole antenna right at your cross pole antennas at your ground terminal. But since the aircraft is moving around and not necessarily pointed at you all the time, then you can have all kinds of crazy statistics. And with um, a line of sight situation, the best you can really do is two downlink streams. So um, that's my general sense of where things would be going, at least initially, and, um, and, and where you could start in creating your own channel models. Now, I mentioned the Doppler before, and the Azimuth um, software model builder will let you build a correlation-based model using the Jake's Doppler spectrum, which, given everything else, is still reasonable. If you wanted to, you could use the geometric stochastic model, which has a more uh, detailed Doppler model. And, and you could say, instead of simply being um, the classical Doppler shape, uh, or in the classical Doppler spectrum, you could get something where the aircraft is moving away or, or, or toward the t ground terminal, and what that does with the uh, geometric stochastic model is that it puts a bunch of um, impulses in the spectrum sort of on the high side if you're moving toward, and it puts them down on the low side if you're moving away, and it all depends on the geometry, in this case, around the ground terminal.